dark and wintry evening as the snow swirled through the air and the wind howled like a banshee, I crept suddenly up the stair. I sat in the quiet of my bedroom and opened with bated breath my zombie horror makeup kit. That would frighten my sister to death. Slowly, my face began to change as I carefully applied the pack. I laughed at my face in the mirror, but an evil stranger leered back. Long hair sprouted wild from my forehead. My nose was half snout, half beak. My right eye bulged, angry and bloodshot, while the left crawled over my cheek. My fangs hung low and broken. My chin was crated with sores. The backs of my hands were mats of hair, and my fingers grew long, bird like claws. Heard my sister's key in the front door. Heard her calling, anyone in? Took one last look at the thing in the glass, distorted and ugly as sin. My sister was running the water. She sang as she washed her hair. I heard her call out as the floorboard creaked. Hello? Is anyone there? And then I released my zombie howl as I crashed through the kitchen door, but caught sight of a ghoul in the window pane and passed out cold on the floor. Faster, roared Miss Trimple. Put your backs into it, slaves. She cracked her state of the art, catching her tail. You'll never make land at this rate, she shrilled. She observed the pupil slave with a gimlet eye. Thomas Peabody was slacking, as usual. Should she send him to the hen's cabin? Mm, no, she would make an example of him. Blogs, she called. The caretaker strutted across, resplendent in a centurion's outfit. Throw him to the sharks, she commanded. The rest of the slaves bent their heads, all wearing in perfect synchronization. The galley leapt ahead, but all the pupil slaves heard was the scream, ah, and the splash. Water, water, begged Victoria Parfit, her blackened tongue protruding from her parched lips. Miss Trimple laughed callously. They had another three hours of rowing before bread and water were stored out. In the meantime, they would have a month's lesson. Mental arithmetic, of course, and the satisfaction of sending poor performers to the arena at a later date. The oars creaked and the groans of the pupil slaves were music to her ears. The pitiless sun beat down and the sea was a sheet of beaten steel. Why, she mused, sinking onto a pile of silken cushions, has nobody thought of this method of teaching before? A voice broke into her reverie. Miss! Miss, I can't draw the oars properly. Her daydream burst with a pop. The nasty pupil stood before her, clutching a picture of her own slave galley. Miss Trimple glared. They look more like matchsticks, she said, venomously. And her lesson on ancient Roman history dragged on. Everybody wishes they were me. Who doesn't get out of bed every morning, look in the mirror and yawning, wish they were me instead? Everybody wishes they were me. I can tell by the way they keep their distance. With respect, without a doubt, I enter a room and they all walk out. Everybody wishes they were me, afraid that they might bore me. People turn their heads, lower their voices and ignore me. But what they're thinking, I can guess, alone and envious, they confess, compared to him and his success, we are dross, a lump and mess. We lack his elegance, his finesse, his cool, his style, his sense of dress. A demigod, no less, yes, if only we were here, if only we were here. Man's best friend. He's not a bad pet, really. I've had him years now. I've got used to his ways. I see 
suppose he's got used to mine as well. He's not as young as he used to be. His eyesight's going. And sometimes he can be a bit diff when he wants to be. He's put on some extra weight too. I take him for walks, but they're shorter, less frequent these days. He's not as energetic as he once was. We don't really play any games now. He can't catch the frisbee anymore. Sticks are left alone, and when the football burst, there didn't seem much point in buying another. He sleeps most of the time. Seems to like it by the fire best these days, with a warm tartan rug and the comforting sound of a television. Occasionally, he puffs up, especially if it involves chocolate, homemade ginger cake from Mrs. B next door, or a visit from the grandchildren. But mostly, it's like this. Peaceful, comfortable, friendly. We look after each other these days. I trust him with my life. Best friend, I wouldn't have him for anything. We have seen some things. Yes, he's the best master any dog could wish for. Oh, 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 oh.